In the last video we saw the definition of the Z transform of a sequence Yn. In this video we will consider the Z transform of a linear combination of two sequences Vn and Wn. So A and B are constants. Well, we just follow the definition of the Z transform. We have to multiply a, a V n plus B W n by Z to the power of minus n and sum this product from n equals zero to n equals infinity. So this linear combination of sequences V n and W n takes the place of Y n. But of course we can multiply Z to the minus n by both of these terms and we can split this sum into two sums. The a and b's are constant, so we can pull those through the summation sign. But notice what we get. This summation here is none other than the definition of the z transform of the sequence vn. Similarly, this sum here is the definition of the z transform of the sequence wn. So, to get the z transform of a linear combination of sequences, we can just take the z transform in we can just distribute it in here so that we get the same linear combination of the Z transforms of the two sequences Vn and Wn. So now as an example we will apply the linearity property of the Z transform um, to get the Z transform of the hyperbolic sine of n or sinh of n. Sinh of n is e to the n minus e to the minus n over 2. So notice that this thing in here is a linear combination of geometric sequences. The geometric sequences are e to the power of n and e to the power of minus n. Well that can be written as e to the power of minus 1 to the power of n. Now in the last video we considered the z transform of the geometric sequence a to the power of n. We saw that it's given by z over z minus a and this is valid provided that the magnitude of z is greater than the magnitude of a. So we will apply that result here. Now this first sequence e to the n is got by, can be um, worked out by replacing a with e. So that um, a is e for our first sequence and for the second sequence a is e to the minus 1. So you can see why we wrote e to the minus n like this e to the minus 1 to the power of n. So these are our constants for the sequences. You can see also that we are applying the linearity property to take the z operator into this expression here. Okay, so we get a half z e to the n minus a half z e to the minus 1 to the n. All right, so we plug into this thing here, plug e into it, e in for a and then e to the minus 1 in for a. To get a common denominator, we multiply these two denominators together and I've taken out the half. So we've z times z is z squared. We're going to get minus z e to the minus 1 minus z times e. So if I take out the minus z, we get uh, e plus e to the minus 1. Finally, we have minus e times minus e to the minus 1. That's plus 1. To get the numerator, we multiply z minus e by z and z minus e to the minus 1 by z. Well, we have um, z minus e times z is z squared minus ez. That's the result of dividing z minus e into the common denominator to get z minus e to the minus 1, um, which we multiply by z. Sorry, I have this backwards. Actually, I'll factorize z out of this. So we divide z minus e into the common denominator to get the other denominator, which we multiply by 1. So that's z minus e to the minus 1. Then we have a minus sign for here. And we divide z minus e, sorry, we divide z minus e to the minus 1 into the common denominator to get z minus e, the other denominator, which we multiply by 1. So we can see that these z's will cancel out. And we'll end up with a minus e to the minus 1 plus e. So that's e minus e to the minus 1. Now we will write our z transform in terms of sinh and cosh functions. So look at the numerator here, e minus e to the minus 1. Well, if we replace x by 1 in sinh function, 
you can see that we can replace the numerator here with 2 times sinh1. Similarly for the cosh function, if we replace x with 1, we can replace this thing here in the denominator with uh, 2 times cosh1. So at last we found a z transform of sinh of n. It is z times sinh of 1 over z squared minus 2z times cosh of 1 plus 1. Now we can consider the z transform of a more general sinh, sinh function. Sinh of alpha n, where alpha is some constant. What we actually do is we replace this 1 with alpha. Just to get a quick idea of why we do that, if we go back up here to sinh of n, if we had sinh of alpha n, we would have e to the alpha n minus e to the minus alpha n. Um, so this thing, uh, this thing here would be e to the alpha instead of e. And this thing here would be e to the minus alpha instead of e to the minus 1. So, you know, when we did all, all our combining here, this quantity here um, would involve e to the alpha minus e to the minus alpha. So we would have 2 times sinh alpha here. And in here, instead of e to the 1 plus e to the minus 1, we would have um, e to the alpha plus e to the minus alpha. That's the definition of cosh of alpha. And uh, yeah, we'd have 2 cosh alpha here. In a very similar way, we can get the z transform of the hyperbolic cos function. The function cosh alpha times n, where alpha is some constant. Next we will consider trigonometric sequences. We will start with the trigonometric sequence cos of omega n. So before we do that, what is the sequence cos of omega n? Well, we start at n equals 0, so we will get the cos of 0, which is 1. Then we set n equal to 1, so we will get cos of omega. Next we set n equal to 2, so we get cos of 2 omega. Then we get cos of 3 omega, and so on. So we want the z transform of this sequence. Now to do that, we will get the z transform of a geometric sequence which has the form of an exponential. So that's something that we saw in the last video. But we will use Euler's formula to link an exponential function with the trigonometric functions cos of x and sine of x. Euler's formula links these quantities through the complex number i. So how can we write the sequence cos omega n in terms of exponential sequences. Well, we start off with Euler's formula and uh, we vary Euler's formula by considering e to the minus i times x. Well, that's going to be cos of minus x plus i times sine of minus x. I've just replaced x with minus x. Now the cos of minus x is just the same as the cos of x. But the sine of minus x is minus sine x. So to get cos of x in terms of exponentials, what we can do is we can take this equation and add it onto this equation. So if we add the left-hand side of this equation onto the left-hand side of this equation here, we will get um, e to the ix plus e to the minus ix. Um, now I must add the right-hand side of this equation onto the right-hand side of this equation here. Well, cos x plus cos x is 2 cos x. Plus i sin x minus i sin x, well that gives us 0. So now you can see that the cos of x can be written as a half of this thing here. So we can write our cos sequence in terms of these two exp um, geometric sequences. That's what they will boil down to, but we have we have this um, constant i, the square root of minus 1. So, to get the z of cos omega n, we have to get the z of this quantity here. z of a half 
into e to the i well we repl i need to replace x with omega n okay to get cos omega n so it's e to the i times omega n plus e to the minus i times omega n okay so um, inside the brackets we have the cos of omega n next we apply the linearity property so half is just a constant that can be pulled out and we can take z into this sum of exponentials okay so we have geometric sequences here okay we're getting the z of two geometric sequences and we saw that in the previous video um, a to the power of n is our geometric sequence or a is a constant what is a in this case here but well, a is actually e to the power of i omega so i can actually write this sequence as e to the power of e to the power of i omega times n see omega is some constant and i is a constant so okay i is the square root of minus one but we are, are assuming that we are extending um, the definition of a z transform to include situations where we have complex numbers where the constant is a complex number so this is what's inside the brackets here is our a so e to the i omega n is the same as e to the power of i omega all to the power of n and similarly over here e to the minus i omega n is the same as e to the minus i omega to the power of n okay so we um, sub into this thing here z over z minus a sub in both of these okay let's factorize out this z so we have one here and a one here we get a common denominator we multiply these denominators together so we have z squared minus z e to the minus i omega minus z e to the i omega we can factorize out the minus z then we have minus e to the minus omega by minus e to the minus i omega that gives us plus e to the zero which is one so we divide this first denominator into the common denominator to get the other denominator which we multiply by one and divide the other denom this one here into the common denominator to get the other denominator which we multiply by one so you can see uh now the good news here is we can uh, write these exponential terms in terms of the cos function so i won't appear in the result okay so you can see here that we've e to the i omega plus e to the minus i omega well if we go over here and replace x with omega that's exactly what we have in here so all we have to do is just multiply both sides by two so we get two cos x so the two cos x can take the place of what's inside the brackets here and we have the same situation down here this is two cos x well of course I shouldn't say x I should say omega or w by the way this thing here is multiplied by z so now we can write down the z transform of the sequence cos n omega I've cancelled the twos this two here the twos on top and we multiply the z back in here so on top we have z squared minus um, I'm sorry we don't have a z here we get a z when we multiply back in again so we z squared minus z times cos omega and underneath we have z squared minus 2z cos omega plus 1 now in a similar way we can get the z transform of the sequence sine omega n um, we can write sine omega n as 1 over 2i e to the i omega n minus 1 over 2i e to the minus i omega n so to see how to do that we go back to Euler's formula so it says that e to the i times some quantity is the cos of that quantity plus i times the sine of that quantity so the quantity in question here is omega times n now we replace omega n with minus omega n the cos of minus omega n is the same as the cos of plus omega n the sine of minus 
omega n is the same as minus sine omega n. So we saw this before. Uh, this time we want sine, so we need to eliminate cos in this. So that means we have to take the top equation and subtract the bottom equation from it. So we get e to the i omega n. If we take the left-hand side of the top equation, subtract the left-hand side of the bottom equation, these will cancel out. So we have this term minus this term. So that's going to give us um, plus i sine omega n plus i sine omega n, which is 2i sine omega n. And of course, we just divide across by the 2i, and we get the result. So if we want the z-transform of sine omega n, we have to take the z-transform of this thing here. We use the linearity property to take out the constant 1 over 2i. i is just a constant. Uh, that can come out. We define z-transforms to work for situations involving co complex numbers as well. So we need to get z of e to the i omega n minus z of e to the minus i omega n. So you see that we have, like before, two geometric sequences. Um, in this sequence, the constant is e to the i omega. Okay, so that's our constant a. So it's got the form a to the power of n. All right, so um, e i omega n is the same as e i omega to the power of n. And e to the power of minus i omega n is the same as e to the minus i omega to the power of n. So that's our other sequence. And the Z transform has the form Z over Z minus A. That Z has been pulled out on top here, similarly here. Transform of this sequence is Z over Z minus A, where A is E to the minus I omega. Z has gone out. Combine these two, get a common denominator. And uh, we will have combinations of exponentials, which can be replaced by uh, 2I times sine omega N, or cos omega N, depending on the s situation. Okay, um, so in a similar way, we can derive the Z transform of the sine of omega n. So here is a summary of, of our results, and uh, we can apply these to some examples. So suppose we want a Z transform of the sequence sine of n over 2. Well, we compare that to sine of omega n with omega equal to a half. So we just plug a half in for omega, and we get this here. Similarly, for cos 3n, we just uh, plug 3 in for omega, and we get this here. Here's cinch 2n. Just plug 2 in for alpha here to get this. And finally, we have cosh of n. Well, we just plug 1 in for alpha in this up here to get our result. Let's look at this example here. Now, this is a sequence that we've actually seen before. Um, you'll see why soon. So, we just go up here, cos omega n, we replace omega with pi. So we're going to get z squared minus z times cos of pi. And in the denominator, we have z squared minus 2z times cos of pi plus 1. Now, the cos of pi is minus 1. So we have z squared minus z times minus 1, or z squared plus z. Um, the cos of pi is minus 1 down here. Notice that we can factorize the top and the bottom, and z plus 1 is a common factor above and below. Notice here that this result has the form z over z minus a. But we know that the z transform of the geometric sequence a to the power of n is given by z over z minus a. Um, what is a in this example? Well, you can see that a must be minus 1. Okay, we can write this here as minus minus 1. So it looks like we've gotten the z transform of minus 1 to the power of n. Okay, so these are the same, and indeed they are, because if you write out terms of cos n pi, you'll see that. Uh, so if we take the sequence cos n pi with n equal to 0, well, if n is 0, we have the cos of 0, which is 1. If n is 1, we have the cos of pi. If n is 2, we have the cos of 2 pi. If n is 3, we have the cos of 3 pi, etc. 
but it, this is 1. The cos of pi is minus 1. The cos of 2 pi is the same as the cos of naught, which is 1. The cos of 3 pi is the same as the cos of 1 pi, which is minus 1. So indeed, we do get the alternating sequence, minus 1 to the power of n. Let's look at this example here. The z transform of sine of n pi over 2. Well, we compare it to the z transform of sine omega n. The constant omega in this case is pi over 2. Okay, so we plug pi over 2 in for omega in this formula here. The sine of pi over 2 is 1 sine of 90 degrees. So we get uh, z times 1 on top. Um, the cos of 90 or the cos of pi over 2 radians is 0. So we get z squared plus 1. Next, we will uh, get this z transform by using the definition of the z transform. So let's look at what this sequence is. So when n is naught, we have the sine of naught, which is naught. Okay, so we want the z transform of the following sequence. This is when n is naught. When n is 1, we have the sine of pi over 2. Well, that's 1. When n is 2, we have the sine of uh, 2 pi over 2, the sine of pi, which is naught. When n is 3, we have the sine of 3 pi over 2, which is minus 1. When n is 4, we have the sine of 4 pi over 2, which is the sine of 2 pi, which is the same as the sine of naught, which is naught. Um, uh, when n is 5, we have the sine of 5 pi over 2. Well, that's the same thing as the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So the sequence is repeating itself now. Sine of 6 pi over 2 is the same as the sine of 3 pi. Um, that's the same as the sine of pi, which is naught, and so on. So the sequence has the pattern 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, then 0, 1, 0, minus 1, etc. So we want the z transform of this sequence. So remember what we have to do. Here's the definition of the z transform of a sequence. We have to multiply each term by um, z to the minus n and sum those terms from 0 to infinity. So we're going to get 0 times z to the 0. Well, that's just 0. The next term is 1. We multiply that by z to the minus 1. Next term is 0, which we multiply by z to the minus 2. The next term is minus 1, which we multiply by z to the minus 3. And we know that this thing repeats itself. Well, the coefficients repeat themselves. So we're going to get 0 plus, well, 0 z to the minus 4 plus uh, 1 times z to the minus 5 plus 0 times z to the minus 6 uh, minus 1 times z to the minus 7, etc. Notice that we get a geometric series. Uh, the first term is z to the minus 1. What's the common ratio? Well, to get z to the minus 3, we have to multiply z to the minus 1 by z to the minus 2. Okay, and if we multiply z to the minus 2 by any term, we get the next term. So that's the common ratio. So what's this sum? Well, we know that for a geometric series that converges, it will converge to a value given by the first term, z to the minus 1, divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is z to the minus 2. Now, if we, mu if we multiply this thing above and below by z squared, we will get what we got before. z squared by z to the minus 1 is z to the power of plus 1. Underneath we have z squared by 1, z squared by minus z to the minus 2 is um, z to the 0, which is 1. By the way, we need a plus sign here. Actually, r is minus z to the minus 2, okay? Because we have an alternating series. So we're going to get minus, minus 1 or plus 1 here, just like we saw before.